It's another lovely day today, great start, and it's not as hot as it has been. Now, for the last few days, I've been working on a new project, and it's the best way, I think, for me personally, to follow on from the previous video where we spoke about how plants interact with our soil, and that if we can in increase its organic matter, then the, the interaction between the soil itself and its life and the plant is so much better than using artificial fertilizers. Now, as regular viewers are going to know, I've got quite a large area here for growing our produce here. And at the moment, and we're just coming to the end of July, we're over 50% of our target of hitting another 500 kilos of produce for this growing season. But I've still got some challenges apart from this strong heat. So, last year I extended the growing space, but um, I've not been able to utilise all of that space. Um, previous videos have shown you that I've got melons growing in quite a large area here, along with other squashes. So we're talking about the summer squashes of Turks um, and obviously zucchinis or courgettes. And then I've got patty pans, pumpkins, melons, all that kind of stuff is all growing in one part. But the other part hasn't produced me anything. And there's a reason for that. And what I've done is, is I've worked out that I can actually increase the soil life of those other beds by doing one simple thing and I'm about to show you what that is. Now currently you're sat on top of one of the compost bins here and you might wonder why I'm on top of a compost bin. Well in a couple of weeks time I'm going to be publishing a video that gives you a comprehensive guide as to how I make our compost here. But this that you're about to see is an alternative way of introducing that all-important organic matter into our growing spaces without an awful lot of effort. The other thing you hope you're going to get from it is that if we stop looking at the term weeds and consider them as being plants, then you are going to save yourself a huge amount of time in your garden. If the definition of a weed is a plant that's in the wrong place, would you call a tomato a weed? You wouldn't, would you? Well, I've got tomatoes growing in the middle of my squashes. So it's a plant in the wrong place, but it's not a weed, is it? So. I'm looking at some of these plants that I have in my spaces and thinking, how can I utilize them? So like I say, what you're about to see is exactly how I'm doing just that. As well as using them to shield my melons from the direct heat of the sun, I can also use them to produce organic matter that I need to get into these beds. So let's take a look at it. I hope you enjoy it. Now we're in an area of the vegetable garden where um, I created some new beds the end of last year for this year but the soil that I had was pretty bad and so I decided to plant beans because I wanted to get some nitrogen back into the soil and now the beans I put in were sacrificial I wasn't expecting to get any crop I was purely looking to get the biomass from the plant and also for the roots to fix the nitrogen into the soil itself and as we look at this particular bay or bed you can see there's a lot of growth in there and it's mainly weed growth and I want to clear it. Now in amongst the beans, predominantly I've got two other plants here. You'll notice that I don't say weeds that often. The first thing I've got is this guy and that is red root amaranth. And it's not edible as such, it's not poisonous, but it's not going to do your stomach much good. And also what we've got is this guy here, which is lamb's quarter. But if you look here, it's about to go into flower, and these guys are seeds. Now what I want to do is cut these off first, because obviously I don't want the seeds to regerminate next year. And we also have this really nasty grass. That is extremely sharp if it gets into your skin, very, very painful. And so I remove that completely and put it in a different area um, away from the main compost. So I'm going to be cutting the tops of these flowers off, or these seed heads off. Look at this guy. You get a lot of wildlife here, which is so great to see. And you can see I've got beans there, but or bean plants. They're not producing huge amounts. And like I say, I didn't put them in to get a crop. So I'm going to be clearing this. In this particular space here, I put in broad beans and I did it very, very late. But again, the idea wasn't to get a crop of broad beans, it was to get some nitrogen back into these, these spaces. 
So they've done their thing. I've, I've been able to save a few beans, which I'm going to plant up again as seeds um, for next year. But for now, I'm at this stage, and what I want to do is to get this clear. Now, if I find things like grass, I will pull it up by the roots. But anything else, I'm going to use to my advantage. Same as the first bed, I've got this slams quarter that's going to flower, which will go to seed. So I'll cut those out first. And again, there we go. Get rid of any seed heads first. And then what I'm going to do is the ultimate chop and drop. So we're just coming into the last section here now. And what I'm using is my electric hedge cutter. It's a cobra. Was it a cobra what? It doesn't say, it just says cobra on it. You'll see it in a minute. And all I'm literally doing is cutting through this at ground level. It's a great machine. And it's very light. It allows me to use one hand if I need to. Now when I cut the hedge, all the cuttings go into the trailer and the mower. And then I do this to chop it up into smaller pieces which gives me a bigger surface area that allows it to compost down quicker. And there we have it. Now you might think that's a bit drastic. But the point is, or the principle is, is that I'm fortunate, I guess, that what I've got growing in here isn't typical of what, what a lot of people have in their gardens, particularly in the UK. For example, there's nettles, and they come back year after year. Dandelions is another. Um, and obviously quite a bit of grass. Now in this, like I say, lamb's quarter, which is okay. It um, grows from seed from the previous year. So I've taken all the seeds out. I'm left with the parent plant this year. That won't regrow. But what it's done, along with the amaranth, is left its roots in the ground so it can continue interacting with the soil life, um, feeding each other. But then eventually the roots of that, those plants will rot down over the next few weeks. And there you can see, there's the second one I've, that I've done. Missed a few pieces, but that's all right. I'm, I can go around and do that quite quickly. Bit of grass there that I want to get out. And I'm going to be edging all these as well, without the wood, using the edging tool. And here's the third bay. And there's a lot more beans in here. And like I say, by cutting it down at ground level, I'm leaving the roots of the beans in the ground, so it keeps the nitrogen in there. Um, this will rot down over the next few weeks. I will keep it watered as well like I would in the compost heaps, get it to rot down, and then I can add some more compost on the top and have a really good base to plant into for next season. And we're coming towards the end of, the, end of our video for this week. Um, but before we do that, and don't turn off yet, because I've got something important to show you, to follow on from what we've been discussing. And that is, if you look, can you see I've got some, what I call living pathways. Um, so, some people have grass. I've got a mixture of grass and let's call it vegetation. And what I'm now doing is, is I'm utilising this um, to go onto those beds that we've just created. I'll show you what I mean as we walk up. Apart from anything else, it just look nice when you cut your grass, doesn't it? What do you think? And so what I've done is, I've collected quite a bit and I'm throwing it on top of these beds. 
that we cut down yesterday. So that's just going to keep on adding more and more compost material and organic matter. That's the key thing here. We'll have a quick look at the other two. So that's the second one we did yesterday. And this was the bed that we did um, with the hedge cutter that you saw just now. So adding that grass is a great bonus. And like I say, the more I can get, the better. So all the grass I'm cutting now, instead of using the lawn tractor, which just mulches, I'm using the hater, which has a um, collection box. It's a bit harder work, but not only am I feeding the soil, I think the vegetable garden in itself looks a lot nicer. So there we go. Now, so let's quickly summarise why I've been doing all this. So I've saved myself a huge, amount, a huge amount of time. We don't dig the beds. We let the roots of the plants do the work for us to keep the aeration going. So it gets the oxygen in and the water travelling through the soil. So that saves a huge amount of time. Just imagine how long that would take to dig. And also by allowing this stuff to decompose and adding organic matter to the soil, it's going to help with our water retention next year, which for us, as you know, is pretty important. And I'm not having to take this up and take it away to the compost heap to then turn it and then bring it back. I'm doing it in situ. So I'm saving a huge amount of time here for the same result. And the other beauty is, by doing it this way and feeding our soil, I'm not spending any money on fertilisers and amendments. I've got a balanced ecosystem here and it's producing good results. I hope you've learned something from this and if you have I'll catch you in my next video all about making the compost itself in the base but for now take care and I'll catch you next time.